ranging from quick turn prototype to high volume production. The board designer has prepared his layouts on a computer aided design or CAD system. Each CAD system uses its own internal data format so the PCB industry has developed a standard output format to transfer the layout data from the manufacturer. This is referred to as a Gerber file. The Gerber files define the copper layers as well as the solder mask and component notations. First, our CAD engineer conducts a DFM review by checking the trace widths, the space between the traces, hole size, etc. to ensure that the design fits within manufacturing capabilities. Once the data is verified, he will output all the tool files needed to drive the machines that will fabricate and test the PCB. We use laser photo plotters in a temperature and humidity controlled darkroom to make the films we will later use in imaging the PCBs. The photo plotter takes the bore data and converts it into a pixel image. A laser writes this onto the film. The exposed film is automatically developed and unloaded for the operator. We've generated one film per PCB layer. Now the films are registered with each other so that the different layers of the PCB will be perfectly aligned. To produce the inner layers of our multi-layer PCB, we start with a panel of laminates. First step is to clean the copper. We print the panels in a clean room to make sure that no dust gets onto the surface or it could cause a short or open circuit on the finished PCB. The clean panel is coated with a layer of photosensitive film, the photoresist. The bed of the printer has registration pins matching the holes on the photoresist and in the panel. The operator loads the first film onto the pins, then the coated panels, then the second film. The pins ensure that the top and bottom layers are precisely aligned. The printer uses powerful UV lamps which harden the photoresist through the clear film to define the copper pattern. Under the black areas, the photoresist remains unhardened. The clean room uses yellow lighting as the photoresist is sensitive to UV light. The copper pattern we want is now covered by the hardened resist. The unwanted resist is then developed and removed from the panel. The operator checks a sample of the panels to make sure that the copper surface is clean and all the unwanted resist has been removed. You can now see in the blue resist what will be the copper on our inner layer panel. We remove the unwanted copper using a powerful alkaline solution to dissolve or etch away the exposed copper. The operator checks carefully that all the unwanted copper has been etched away. Next, we strip off the blue photoresist, which protected the copper image. So now we have the exact pattern required. The operator checks that all the photoresist has been removed. The inner core of our multilayer is now complete. Next, we punch the registration holes we will use to align the inner layers to the outer layers. The operator puts the core into an optical punch which lines up the registration targets in the copper pattern and punches the registration holes. We won't be able to correct any mistakes on the inner layers once we've assembled the multi-layer, so we now give the panel a complete machine inspection. The automated optical inspection system scans the board in broad strokes and compares it with the digital image generated from the original design data. Any errors are displayed on the screen. Once AOI certifies a 100% defect-free product, we can apply an oxide treatment to protect our newly formed copper features from oxidizing. At Saturn, we use an alternative oxide called Cobra Bond, as opposed to a standard brown or black oxide. Cobra Bond cleans and protects the base copper from oxidation. It also serves as an adhesion promoter by offering up to 40% increase in prepreg to copper adhesion. The layup operator has already placed a copper foil and two sheets of prepreg on the heavy steel base plate. Now, he places the pre-treated core carefully on the alignment pins. Then he adds the required sheets of prepreg, 
another copper foil, and an aluminum press plate. He builds up more panels on the base plate in the same way. The system then rolls the heavy stack under a press, which lowers down the steel top plate. He pins the stack together and the system rolls the finished stack out of the clean room into a rack. The system automatically loads stacks on loader and loads them into the bonding press. This press uses heated press plates and pressure to bond the layers of the PCB together. Once the cycle is completed, the system unloads the press and carefully rolls the heavy stacks to here, the layup operator depins the stack and removes the top plate. He unloads each of the panels from the stack, removing the aluminum press plates used to ensure a smooth copper finish. During bonding, excess resin from the prepreg is squeezed to the edge of the panel outside of the image area. This excess is now cut off on a computer-controlled profiling machine. The operator loads the panel onto the bed of the machine and selects the correct program with the X-Y coordinates of the path for the cutter to follow. The cutter mills out the final profile for the production panel. The panels are now ready for drilling. Now we drill the holes for leaded components and the via holes that link the copper layers together. To set up the drill, the operator first puts a panel of exit material on the drill bed. This stops the drill from tearing the copper foil as it comes through the PCB. Then, he loads one or more PCB panels and a sheet of aluminum entry foil. The drilling machine is computer controlled. The operator selects the right drill program. This tells the machine which drill to use and the XY coordinates of the holes. Our drills use air driven spindles which can rotate up to 180,000 revolutions per minute. High-speed drilling ensures clean hole walls to provide a secure base and good plating on the hole walls. Drill change is fully automatic. The machine selects the drill to use from the drill rack, checks that it is the correct size, and then loads it into the drill head. Once all the holes are drilled, the operator unloads the panels from the drilling machine and discards the entry and exit material. Byproducts of the drilling process are burrs in the copper surface as well as dust and debris within the hole. We address this via a deburr and hole cleaning process. Our Ishi Hayoki deburr, it takes 40 thickness measurements of each panel, optimizes the upper and lower brush height to maintain an optimal brush to panel footprint. To help initiate the copper plating process, we will first metalize the whole surface using a direct metalization process called shadow. Next, we use water jets in excess of 1000 psi to clear the holes of dust and debris. Now we image outer layers. The bed of the printer has registration pins matching the holes of the photo tools and the panel. The operator loads the first film onto the pins, then the laminated panel, and finally the second film. The pins ensure that the top and bottom layers are precisely aligned. The printer uses powerful UV lamps to harden the photo resist. So the photo mask is clear where we want the resist to harden and black where we don't want resist. The mylar film which protected the photo resist is now removed and the image panel is conveyed out of the clean room and through a developer which removes the unhardened resist. For inner layers, the copper pattern we want was covered by the resist. For outer layers, it is exposed, ready to be plated. The operator now checks the panels to make sure that the copper surface is clean and all the unwanted resist has been removed. Next, we electroplate the boards with copper. The operator loads the panels onto the flight bars. He checks all the clamps to ensure a good electrical connection. The panels themselves act as cathodes for electroplating and we can plate the whole walls thanks to the conductive carbon layer already deposited there. The operator starts the automated plating line. The copper surface of the panels is cleaned and activated in a number of baths and then electroplated. The whole process is computer controlled to ensure that each set or flight of panels stays in each bath exactly the right amount of time. You can see the copper anodes in their baths. When plating is completed, the flight bars is returned to the operator and he unloads and stacks the plated panels. He then uses non-destructive testing to check a sample of each flight 
to ensure that the copper and tin plating is the correct thickness. The copper is covered with a thin layer of tin as an etch resists. We will now remove the unwanted copper foil from the surface. We do this on a single continuous process line. The first step is to dissolve and wash off the resist which covers the unwanted copper. Then we remove the unwanted copper using a powerful alkaline solution to etch away the exposed copper. The process is carefully controlled to ensure that as we etch down, we don't etch sideways as well. This means that the finished conductor widths are exactly as designed. Finally, we strip off the thin tin coating which protected the copper pattern. So now you can see only designed copper pattern remains. As the boards emerge from the line, they are stacked automatically. We'll take the panels from here to an intermediate process called jet scrubbing to remove oxidation from the surface of the copper as well as to create topography to enhance solder mask adhesion which is applied in the next process. The cleaning process also includes the application of an anti-tarnish that prevents copper from oxidizing for a short period of time. The panels are now ready for solder mask application. Most boards have epoxy ink solder mask printed onto each side to protect the copper surface and prevent solder shorting between components during assembly. To protect your copper features permanently, we apply a coating of solder mask. We utilize two high production spray coating lines. These machines spray the surface of the panel with a coating of solder mask. The advantage of this is that you have a much more uniform thickness across the panel since it is a non-contact method of application. Solder mask is known as liquid photo imageable or LPI. The panels are now racked and put through a conveyorized dryer which hardens the resist just enough to allow it to be printed or tack dried. The operator checks for a complete and even coating. Panels are imaged. For this, we use a two drawer UV printer. The operator mounts the photo tool films on the machine and then places the panel onto the registration pins. Mask alignment will be better than 50 microns. As with the etch and plating resist used earlier in the process, the UV lamps in the machine harden the ink where the film is clear. That is where we need solder mask on the finished board. The image panels are put onto a conveyor out of the clean room and into the developer which strips off the unhardened and unwanted resist. Before the copper oxidizes for too long, we've got to cover it with a protective plating. This is all up to your needs. For standard designs, we offer both tin lead and lead-free hot air solder leveling. For those designs that require flat surfaces, we offer immersion silver and immersion gold in-house. When there is a need, we can provide immersion tin and OSP through an outsourced service provider. Most PCBs have a component legend to show which component goes where. Today we use inkjet printers to image the legends direct from the board digital data. Our inkjet legend printers develop the highest performance of PCB legend printing, offering the latest innovation in inkjet technology. Our inkjet legend printers allow printing and curing on the same system. The UV curable ink used with our printers is mill certified and Rojas compliant, supporting a completely green process. Before we ship, we need to electrically test your boards to make sure that there are no shorts or opens. We perform this process with the aid of our six flying probes and seven grid testers. We're so confident in our systems that we offer a blanket guarantee on our boards up to five times the cost of the board to cover the cost of labor and parts on boards that are found to have shorts and opens that should have been caught in this process. This is an industry leading guarantee and to date we have found no one willing to offer this to their customers. Now to make sure there is no defective products, all the boards go through 100% 2.5 zoom inspection. Each panel is scrutinized with the toughest quality inspection procedures before it is released to the next process. Our inspectors are rigorously trained for this very important process to meet our high quality objectives. These inspectors must pass a rigorous training and testing period prior to becoming a certified inspector. 
While the 18 by 24 inch panel is convenient for us to run in production, it is not a good fit for your design. That's where these CNC controlled routing and scoring machines come in handy. Saturn uses eight Exelon routers with the capability to route aluminum panels. In addition, we have two AccuScore scoring machines with jump score capability and aluminum scoring. Our operators will download the part-specific programs created in our CAD department for your board into the required process. These machines will then proceed to separate out your boards from our production panel. In each fabrication process, the first piece dimensions are verified on a CMM machine against the customer's fabrication drawings. Once the dimensions are verified to be within customer specifications, the process is allowed to continue. In the last step of the processes, final inspection quality control, a team of sharp-eyed inspectors give each PCB a final careful check over. Here, an inspector looks for any cosmetic defects like scratches. Then, she measures the panel against the mechanical drawing, checking hole diameters with a tapered probe. If everything is okay, she prints out the production release note. After inspection, the PCBs are vacuum sealed to keep out dirt and moisture. They are then bubble wrapped, securely boxed, sealed, and shipped off to customers. The process is complete. We have followed our PCB from the customer's original design to the physical circuit board on its way to him to be assembled in his finished product.